Welcome GeoTrig, this is section 5.4, Medians and Altitudes. The essential question is, what is a triangle's median? How many are there and what properties do they share? So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to draw a triangle on your notes. Any size triangle, it shouldn't be equilateral, but it doesn't matter. Just you know, give it a half a page, make it big. Now as soon as you do that, I want you to mark the midpoints of the sides. So when I say mark the midpoints, the way I do this is I could do this with a ruler. So I'm going to pull out a ruler, so my ruler tool. And with that ruler, I'm going to measure each side and just put a dot at the midpoint. So if I measure this side first, it looks like this is about 150 millimeters, so it's a little under that, so it'll be a little under 75 for the midpoint, so I'm going to say it's right there. For the other side, for me, that's about 68, so I'm going to say that midpoint's going to be at about 34, which is about right here. And then for that last side, I'm going to move my ruler again, and then it's going to rotate, and that looks like that this length is just under 110, so it's going to be just under 55, so let's say 54. So there, I've got my three midpoints. Now, I want to draw lines from the vertex of the midpoint to the opposite side. So I'm going to draw these lines, and here's what it looks like. A vertex to the midpoint and the opposite side should look like this. A vertex to the midpoint and a vertex to the midpoint. So you should get a shape that you know, kind of looks like mine. So there should be three lines in the middle, they should all cross at one point, or be pretty close to that. If you're accurate, they should cross at one point. I'm pretty close to that, pretty accurate. But that's what it should look like. And your triangle might be a little different. The reason we do this is we have this theorem here this week, and it's a little different. It's kind of neat. Concurrency of median theorem. So what does this mean? It means the medians of a triangle congruent at a point, concurrent at a point that's two thirds the distance from each vertex. So you, we drew those lines that we drew. Basically, what it's saying is that is that the, that mid that point in the middle that it cuts all those segments we drew and basically one the smaller section is one third of the size and then the bigger section is two thirds the size so now if I'm drawing it from this triangle right here so the, basically this section's one third from here to here and then this section I'll do that in different colors do it in green from here to here that's going to be two thirds of the overall length of that segment. So that's kind of neat that it always works out that way. The smaller part's one third, the bigger part's two thirds. Uh, let's go, we can actually go back to that triangle that you drew, let's actually measure that. So I, I'd really suggest you do that. So if I, if I take out my ruler again, I'm gonna go back to that triangle, let's see if I can move it, oh boy. Let's see if I can move it, there we go. So I'm gonna go back and measure this. Let's rotate. Oh. I'm not measuring along those sides, I want to measure the length of these lines. So I'm going to line this up, and it looks like for this first line, it goes from 100, to, let's call that about 41, so 41 millimeters right here on this segment, and the other segment, let's see if I put the middle right there, and it looks like this length is about 84, 84 millimeters. So Okay, so if the total length as I measure that, and I say that's going to be 125 total, 125 total. And is 41 divided by 125? Well, these numbers aren't exactly one third and two thirds, because of course this should be half of this one, so this one down here should have been 42. That's because I'm not really precise when measuring. That looks like if I probably was a little more precise, that works out. So the same thing, let's try another segment on here. So I'm going to measure this from this vertex to the midpoint right here, or, or this point right here. It looks like it's about 60, let's call this 67. And the other part of that, and this should be the smaller one that's half the size, and that looks like that's going to be about 34. Yeah, that's about right. 34 is about half of 67. So it looks like it's working out with the shape I drew. You should check your own shape. If it doesn't, you know, if you're off a little bit, it's just probably a measuring error. But it, you should be pretty close to that. All right, uh, another part of this triangle. That point that they all intersect is called the centroid. It's a point of concurrency. The neat thing about this is this is actually the center of gravity of the triangle. If you had a, sh a shape or a, 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 like a block in, in the shape of this and you held it on your finger at that point, it would balance perfectly right there. So it's kind of neat. Uh, another part of this is altitude of a triangle. So an altitude of a triangle, this is the perpendicular segment that's from a vertex to a line containing the opposite side. What does that mean in English? Well, here's some pictures that demonstrate it. This 
This this part right here, PR, this is going to be your altitude right here. That's your altitude. So even if a triangle doesn't have like a, a right angle and it's not one of the sides, we can still find the altitude. So PR is the altitude is an altitude of a triangle right here. A right triangle, well the altitude is actually one of the side altitudes can actually be a side. So this side is an altitude and this side is another altitude. And here's some other drawings with altitudes in them. Um, you're always going to have three different altitudes in a triangle. A right triangle, again, has two, two of the sides are the altitudes with the third one right here. Um, yeah. Oh, the point where the, all, in, all the altitudes intersect is called the orthocenter. It's where the, all the altitudes meet. Note that they don't have to be inside the triangle. Sometimes they're on the line, sometimes they're outside, sometimes they're inside the triangle. This is called the orthocenter. Now this last slide is kind of a summary of everything we've done in this chapter. Uh, I don't really expect you to memorize all these words, but it's it's good to kind of understand. If I see something, like if they all say center here, you're looking for like the center of three points. You know, centroid, there's that ortho center. You're, when you see this, you know, this part of a word, you're looking at where those three lines intersect. You know, uh, it's good to know this. I don't really expect you to memorize it though but just know where to find it. All right, pause for an example. All right, let's try this. In the diagram on the right, XA equals 8. What is the length of XB? So XA right here is 8. I'm going to write an 8. XB is this whole thing. Well, I'm looking at this. XA is clearly the longer side, and X and XB is, and with this AB is the shorter side. We know from the properties, the theorem here, Basically, that whole thing, this this little part, so XA should equal one two thirds of the whole thing, so XB. So I can I can plug that in the formula and say, well, XB equal XA equals eight equals two thirds XB, and then we could multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this fraction. So multiply by three halves and multiply by three halves, and what you'll get over here is you get 3 times 8, so 24 halves, which will equal 12. So a length of XB equals 12. Another way to think of that, I know this maybe be able to eyeball this 8 is going to be 2 thirds the whole thing, and I mean just multiply it by 50%, so it's going to be 12. Anyways, diagram, problem 1, ZA equals 9. Let's do that in a different color. ZA equals 9. What is the length of ZC? Well, ZA is going to be the bigger part, and ZC is going to be the smaller part. So I want to figure out the total length of that thing was, well, wait, ZA. That's, that's, there's a few ways we can think of this, OK? What is the length of ZC? Well, it's the whole thing. So I can do that formula again and say ZA equals 2 thirds times ZC. And you could find the same formula. And then you could plug this in. 9 equals 2 thirds ZC. And then we can multiply by the reciprocals. So 3 halves on both sides. And these will cancel out. And then you're going to get 27 halves, which is going to be 13.5. Either way, that's your answer. All right, pause the video. OK, number one is, is segment AP a median or an altitude? AP is right here. And you know, altitude's that one where it's, well, it looks like it's in the middle, and P is cutting this segment in half. This is going to be a median. If AP equals 18, what's KP? So AP equals 18, and then KP is going to be that little smaller part. Well, basically, KP is going to be the little, one third of the length of AP, so that's going to be 6. One third of 18 is 6. If BK equals 15, what is KQ? So BK is this, and we want to find KQ. KQ this is going to be two thirds of the whole thing, and KQ is going to be one third of the whole thing. So if two thirds is 15, basic one third of that is going to be half of 15, and it'll be 7.5. Which two segments are altitudes? Okay, so altitudes are what are the altitudes again? Perpendicular segment of the vertex line containing the opposite side. Okay, so the perpendicular segments, these are going to be perp BA is going to be one of them. And another one is going to be right off the right angle. It's going to be AC. There you go.